Okay, so this is nice. The Vancouver Canucks are keeping connected with the things we like as fans, as General Manager Patrick Alvin announced today that the club has made multiple additions to its player development staff to support the growth of Canucks prospects at all levels. Now, that is a whole bunch of words, but what in the heck does that really mean? Let's go over onto the Vancouver Canucks website and take a look at what they have to say. Let's align the page here. There you go. The Canucks have enhanced their player development department, posted by the Canucks communication staff about, what is that, over an hour ago? So yeah, that's my bad for getting to this news a little bit late. But take a look at all of these things that they have to say. The Vancouver Canucks have announced today that the club has made multiple additions to its player development staff to support the growth of Canucks prospects. After spending a season gaining knowledge and experience in the club's hockey operations department as special advisors to the GM, Daniel and Henrik Sedin will transition to new roles within player development, working daily on and off the ice with young players in Vancouver and Abbey. Joining the Canucks are former NHLers Michael Samuelson and Mike Komisarek, who will primarily work with the Canucks prospects throughout the organization, too. Now, this right here, Daniel and Henrik Sedin joining the player development side of things, mostly going to work daily with the prospects, that is... Exciting, for lack of a better word. Vancouver is going to be getting themselves two franchise superstars, two game changers in the league working with their prospects every single day in Abbotsford and in Vancouver. I don't really think there's anybody else in the Canucks organization right now who could probably give more wisdom and advice and pointers to the players that are going to be carrying the Canucks into the future. Not to mention the fact that you have two guys in Samuelson and Komisarek who are going to be helping out too. This is a really fun one, by the way. Michael Samuelson coming over here, back in the Vancouver Canucks organization. He's 45 years old, but I think a lot of people will remember that when the Canucks went to the Stanley Cup Finals. Michael Samuelson was a part of the team. He was only on the Vancouver Canucks for three years, but those were a pretty significant three years in the franchise's history. He also went to the Stanley Cup Finals twice as a member of the Red Wings in 08 and 09, winning one cup in the process. And he was traded over to Florida in, what the heck was the trade? Let me think about it for a little bit. Was it David Booth? Let's go over to the history right here. Here it is. Vancouver to Florida. Was it David Booth? Let's see. Let's see. Yes, there you go. David Booth, Marco Sturm. That was the trade right there. That's so bad. Ay ay ay. David Booth, what a weird Canuck, eh? But... Michael Samuelson, unfortunately, he did not play the entire cup run. He had a core injury, I believe, that sidelined him for the remainder of the season. But he was a pretty good player for Vancouver. 30 goals, 50 points. He played well with Ryan Kessler, plus he was a super Swede, so there was a good amount of love going around there. And I know you might be thinking that, hey, Mike Komisarek is probably, like, the randomest guy out there to be added onto this team, but Komisarek was indeed on the Carolina Hurricanes for a limited sample in 2013-14, when Jim Rutherford was also a part of the Hurricanes as their president, GM, and franchise owner. So, there is somewhat of a connection there with him and the upper management the Canucks have, but of course, Michael Samuelson is the bigger one that I think more Canucks fans are familiar with, and if you want to talk about Sedin's and, you know, all the other 2011 staff here, Mikhail Samuelson is a part of that group, as is Chris Higgins, who is also going to be sticking around here. Assistant GM Cami Granato will continue to oversee the player development department alongside senior director, player development, and Abbotsford Canucks GM Ryan Johnson, while Chris Higgins remains in his current position as assistant director of player development. We are pleased to have solidified... Oh, by the way, I should have moved that. That's my bad. Let's go ahead and do that. We're pleased to have solidified our player development department for next season with the additions of Samuelson and Komisarek as well as Daniel and Henrik Sedin. Granado and Johnson led an extensive search to find the individuals with the right attributes, winning pedigrees, and who fit the overall strategy of the Canucks moving forward. This article then goes over into a little scouting report. Samuelson, 45, most recently served as the GM of Sotatalgia SK in the Hockey All Svenskin for part of three seasons from 2019 to 2022. Previously, he spent three seasons as a European development coach for the Chicago Blackhawks from 2018 to 2019 as well. 
He also appeared in 699 career regular season games over the course of a 13-year NHL career between Detroit, Florida, Vancouver, Pittsburgh, New York, and San Jose. Yeah, he went all around, baby. A native of Sweden, Samuelsson is a member of the Triple Gold Club, having won a gold medal at the Olympic Games in 2006, World Championships in 06, and a Stanley Cup Championship with the Wings in 08. He played 104 career playoff contests, including 23 with the Canucks, registering 60 points. Thomas Eric Forty joins the organization after spending three seasons as a player development coach for the Buffalo Sabres from 2018 to 2020. Previously, he spent two seasons as an undergrad assistant coach with the Michigan Wolverines at the University of Michigan while he completed his degree in sports management and communication. Okay, I need to go ahead and look at that. Let's go ahead and see Thomas Eric and his profile for team staff material here. When was he at Michigan? Oh, okay, he was in Michigan in 2015 to 2016. So I was kind of thinking maybe there's some alignment there with Quinn Hughes because Hughes was there in 2017 to 2019. But unfortunately, that does not seem to be the case. There are some other players, though, in Michigan that Komi Sarek would probably have had connections with. Tyler Mott comes to mind. I'm thinking about Kyle Connor and Zach Warinsky, too. So let's just see some of the rosters that Komi Sarek was working with with the Wolverines over here, if my computer can actually load. Yeah, so Zach Hyman, Dylan Larkin, Tyler Mott was indeed there, Warinsky, Comfer, and a few other players that you're probably not too familiar with. Let's go to the other Michigan Wolverine roster as well in 2015-16 when Komi Sarek was also there. Uh, it's the same guys. Cooper Marodi, Kyle Connor, Warinsky. Okay, let's go back to the article over here. Selected in Montreal in the first round, seventh overall in the 2001 draft, Komi Sarek played 551 regular season games over 11 NHL seasons as a defenseman with Montreal, Toronto, and Carolina, recording 81 points in 679 penalty minutes. He also collected three points in 29 playoff games. He also represented the USA on multiple occasions, including two times each at the World Juniors and the World Hockey Championships. So these are some pretty good hires that the Vancouver Canucks have gone out there and executed. Rutherford and Alvin, you've done it again. You've added some personnel to this team that I very much like, and you've made moves to set up these prospects and young guys in the best way possible. Henrik and Daniel Sedin, hey... Welcome. You're going to be working with Jet Wu, Danila Klimovich, Linus Carlson, whoever else is making the Canucks, and the Abbotsford Canucks earlier on. Once these guys show up and they're going to be mentored by Daniel and Henrik Sedin, I just can't wait to see the habits on and off the ice that they're going to pick up on, the advice that these two can go out there and provide, plus Samuelson and Komisar coming in here too. It's a really good system I think the Canucks have since we didn't really have too many players or not players, but like people that did this sort of stuff when Benning was here, right? We didn't have a whole bunch of extra guys coming in here and just working with the prospects by themselves. That's not really something the Canucks had, but now they do have them courtesy of Daniel Henrik, Samuelson, etc. So I really do like the way that Jim Rutherford is managing this team. And I can't wait to see where they go next. Talk to me in the comments on your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.